Okay, this is going to be an unboxing of the HP. This is for one of our clients. We're going to do an upgrade to another from a Toshiba to this. This is a ProBook 450G7. If I remember, it's an i7, 16 gig, 512 gig SSD. Pretty much standard. Charger is a bit smaller than before, which is nice. 65 watts. It is not a Type C. It's a standard HP mini jack, round jack. It's a nice 15.6 inch. Should be full HD. Hmm, smells very nice. So on this side we got the standard ports, Type C. You can charge via Type C as well. Network, HDMI, two USBs, headphone, and charging port. Quite a busy area. And you can see the lock and the USB and card reader. I might open this one up if the cloning requires it, but not at the moment. Very nice, i7, sticker is a bit odd. Yeah, there's all these quality issues with HP recently, like look at that. There's a bit of dust in there from manufacturing, it's under the sticker. So power on the unit and it comes uh, without any charge I guess, which is not normal. I find the normal laptops to always have charge, but these things for some reason they don't. Okay, charging, power on, we get some lights. So first look, there is a privacy switch or a cover. Probably infrared for face, Windows face login. So that is an IPS panel, you can tell by being not being shiny, and you can look on the edges, it still shows nice and clear. <clears throat> this one also suffers from a little bit of bleeding on the edge, as you can see. You can see a little bit of the black of the screen, and here you don't, it goes all the way to the edge. Small things like this brings HP down if you're a perfectionist. Although this is a business model, users don't care as much. Uh, US. If I remember this model, NFC is built in to the trackpad which can cause problems. Okay, that's pretty neat, easy to set up. Not that heavy for a 15.6. They finally learned their lesson doing the hinges properly, not like the 15-BS model. So 
So this is not the cellular one. There is another model which is a 4G version. You can put a SIM card. And the buttons here have a answer phone call, reject phone call functions. Pretty cool. Laptop works as a mobile phone. Like literally a mobile phone. Not just like a internet based, IP based phone. We'll have a quick look at the specs and then we'll let it go. No, no, I don't want to leave everything to you. Okay. Okay, have a look at device manager. So what have we got? Realtek audio chip. Fingerprint and Windows Hello, that's the infrared on the next to the camera. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, standard, yeah, infrared camera and the, and the HD camera. Hmm, so it uses a 512 gig SK Hynix chip. This one has a dedicated GPU and the Intel HD, UHD. So this one does not have NFC. So it's got Wi-Fi 6AX201 model, Wi-Fi chip. i7 10th generation, okay. Standard TPM. Standard stuff here, nothing fancy. All right, that's about it, I guess. And um, in terms of system information, so it comes shipped with Windows 10 Pro. G7, the BIOS version, quite recent, August, 2nd of August. and 16 gig ram cool all right that's about it for this it's a very nice looking laptop nice business style still not one of my favorites unfortunately um so for this one we've got the on-site three-year warranty because i don't trust this model at all but we'll see we'll let the client use it and see if they have any feedback that's about it for this video and I might make another video later today or tomorrow where I actually will clone a Toshiba laptop onto this and it may have a CSM or legacy I'm not sure boot let's have a look at the BIOS while we're here see if it supports um, legacy boot ProBooks should as part of a business uh, corporate network may have different requirements and they usually meet those criterions So we're going to, what's under, it should be under advanced, let's have a look. Secure boot configuration, yeah, so it does support legacy support enable, which is good. So we won't have any issues cloning if the other computer, for whatever reason, that is on, is on legacy. I wouldn't want to run it on legacy on this, but I might use another cloning software which will make it work on UEFI boot. So that's about it, I think. Hmm, okay. 
Nice, it's good to have such features in the BIOS. And if you're wondering if you can adjust the video RAM, I'm not sure. That will be on the built-in device. Yeah, you can. So this will expand, not the NVIDIA chip, but the Intel chip, Intel uh, uh, graphic card. Ah, oh, cool, nice. This is very nice. So it supports UMI, meaning you don't want to use the NVIDIA graphic card. One advice I can give if you're a user of this computer, if you don't do any gaming or graphics intensive applications, put it to UEMI and increase this. This will greatly increase the life of the computer because, say down the track, you do have a problem with the NVIDIA chip, you will have a bricked computer and you won't have a way to disable it software-wise like this. And you won't see a much performance difference if you're just an office user in you know, YouTube and basic stuff. But if you do any CAD or you know video editing or anything that you can use the video card resources, then um, I would say leave it at um, hybrid. Then it will use whatever it needs. And I'll just show you, for example, if I was to open up, um, I was connected through, connected to the Wi-Fi, and just open up YouTube and just have a look at the um, graphic card usage. We shouldn't see much happening there. Okay. God, that takes an awful long time. It's not even on the Wi-Fi. Okay. So we might get the computer going mental. Please can we please set up the Windows 10. We might not since it's a business model. Okay. So and let's have a look at the resource meter. So you can see there a GPU, nothing being used, that's a GPU. Oh, come on Microsoft, just fuck off. Okay. Just um, open any video. You can see nothing happens with the graphic card performance. So like I said, you don't really use it unless you use an app which will dedicate its resources to that. But yeah, so you can safely disable it and you will get a much longer life out of your computer. All right, that's about it. And um, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to support this channel.